Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. Today we're playing Imperium from Nigel Buckle and David Terzi. Imperium consists of two boxes, Classics and Legends. You can buy one or the other, they're independent of each other, or you can combine them as well. Imperium is a card game setting civilization against civilization. Each box comes with eight civilizations. So if you have both sets, you can pit one against the other. It actually plays one to four, but I'm going to show you the solo game. If we open up Classics and take a look inside. Now, I've actually, let's do Legends as well. So this is what the game looks like. You get two rule books, a rule, general multiplayer rule book, solo rule book. You'll get a punch board with tokens. Obviously, because I'm using classics I've got everything already punched and a single six-sided die and then slots for all your cards okay there's a set of common cards as well and actually the common cards from the two sets are slightly different so in the solo game you're playing two civilizations you against a bot you'll use a set of civ cards from whichever faction you want to play against and one set of common cards. Choose which set you want to use. Now what you'll see also is that for classics I've sleeved the cards. It's not something I normally do but I have noticed that some of the cards are slightly miscut so I had to sleeve them because I'm a bit fussy when it comes to shuffling cards that are not perfectly sized. The downside is that the insert doesn't fit sleeved cards so there's a bit of a squeeze to get everything back in. Uh, the other thing is I've printed off these little reference cards that help you with the solo. I'm going to be using these in the game. They don't come with the game. They're from BGG user Ricardo Raguzzi so thanks ever so much to Ricardo for making these and making them available to everybody. It is just a copy of what's in the rule book. But it's just easier to have one reference card handy. I like it. So good job. I'm using that. All right. I'm going to get set up. We're going to play Celts versus the Romans. I'm going to be the Celts. I'm going to have the bot playing Romans. Let's learn how to play this game. A quick word on setup. So I've grabbed the Celts and the Romans, but I could just as easily have chosen any two from the 16 across both sets. If you want to combine sets, do that. So I've got the two civilizations I want to play and then the common cards are uncivilized, region, unrest, fame, state and solstice, so this little section plus the tributary and civilized cards. All right. Now whichever set you choose you can use this five set of cards either from classics or from legends but if you mix and match the civilizations then you need to go and look at these, which are the tributary cards, all right, the blue ones. And what you'll find is that in this set, there's a card for each of the other civilizations in the other set. So let's say I decided to choose Egyptians rather than Romans as my adversary. Then, from Legends, we'll grab... Egyptians okay, instead of the Romans but then we'll remove the Egyptians tributary okay, remove that from the game and instead grab a random one from here you can see they've got Romans in there see so I might put Romans for example I right, just grab a random one that's not being used and then you get the tributaries back up all right does that make sense so whichever two civilizations you choose, make sure they're not in the tributaries set. All right? That's how you combine them. The other thing is, within these common cards, some of them will be marked 3 plus or 4. So we're playing solo, so we're going to remove those, and we're setting up as per the two-player game. Okay, so anything with three and four on, taken out of the game. And okay, once you've got them all separated out, 
back in the box so you don't need them. You're going to need the single solstice card and then you've got these Empire Barbarian cards. You're going to need two of those. Okay, The other two back in the box. We want the one reference card or the page from the rule book that refers to our AI adversary which is the Romans. Okay, so we're just going to grab that. It's double sided. We'll start with the Barbarian side with the Celts. They'll have a, a single colour in the bottom left hand corner. So these are green, Romans are red. Take a Barbarian card each. The Solstice card goes in between. This is our power card. It has these wiggly lines at the bottom. It's two sided. There's a special ability on one side, A for advanced, and there's a B side for beginner. So let's go for the beginner side. Look in the bottom and you'll see the colour and then an icon, okay, like this moon. These are all blank. We're going to put those to a side. We're going to grab all these moon ones. We've got some with a, a star. We've got some with an arrow. And we've got one with a circle. The one with a circle is called the accession card. This goes above our power card, like so. We'll take all the moon cards, give them a shuffle. These go atop of the accession card. The ones with all the stars, these are development cards. The rule book just says place things like so. Okay. We're just going to save a little bit of space. We're going to pop that on there. We're going to put those on there. Okay. So the moon's shuffled face down on top of the accession card, on top of the stack of stars. They don't need to be shuffled. I'm just going to place them like this. These blank ones we're going to shuffle face down, and this will create our deck. All right, this is our starting deck. Place this like so. We're going to do exactly the same for the AI player. These ones with the arrow, anything with an arrow, just put them up with the commons up here for now. Same with these. If there were any uh, anything with arrows on, they'd go up in this commons. They're not, right? Each of the commons has got a banner, right? This one's got a red banner, so we're going to place those with the red commons. So we'll do exactly the same with the with the bots, okay? So we've got their power card, their blanks, face down and shuffled. The development cards have got a plus on them, the accession card got a circle, the moon cards, this is our nation deck, give that shuffle, place it face down. Okay. Alright. Okay, I'll place this in between to separate our deck our player area from their player area. Now this is our dynasty deck. Actually, the, the star ones, we need to fix this. They should be in victory point order, which they are twos, twos, threes, fours, and then these stars, there's some way the question mark on, treat them as five VPs, okay, and the ones with question marks would go on top as the highest, and then we'll put them in reverse order face down, okay, like so. So that's our dynasty deck. Now we've got to think about these commons. The commons go in a common market, and we've got a market board that's kind of in these three separate tokens, we're going to create a single line to create our market board. Looks like this. These red cards, they're unrest. We're going to place them in a pile below here, below this red icon. The purple fame cards, we need to pick out one card. It's called King of Kings. Okay, it's got an A and a B side. We're going to place it with the A side up here above this purple icon. I'm going to take the rest of the fame cards, give them a shuffle. We're going to place them sideways, perpendicular on top. We're going to remove the top two cards from the fame deck. They're going to go back in the box. They're out of the game. Next, we've got the yellow region cards. We're just going to give this deck a shuffle. And there's a region area here. We're going to take six of those cards, place them above the region area. Okay. The rest face down to the side. We'll come back to those in a bit. Next we'll take the green. These are the uncivilized cards. Okay, 
uncivilized. You'll notice that the leaf, the green leaf icon, is the bot on the bottom of each of those cards. It also has the civilization icon, but it doesn't matter. Just look at the green banner at the top. Give those a shuffle. We'll take six of those above this part of the market. Okay, the rest. Place them with those region cards that we've not used. Now we'll take the white civilized cards. Do the same. Take six. Place them over this area. The rest. Then we take the blue tributary cards. We're just going to stick them on this deck. There isn't an area for tributary cards specifically. This deck now is the main deck. So it's got all the remaining civilized, uncivilized, region and tributary cards. We're going to give that a shuffle. You'll notice there's an area just for that. Place this sideways. Now we're going to create the market. We're going to draw two cards from the main deck and then one card from the civilized, uncivilized and region cards. Okay, that's our market. With the exception of region cards, there may be some region cards here, remember. With the exception of region cards, so all uncivilized, civilized and tributaries, we're going to place an unrest card beneath it. We're nearly done the setup. Finally, we're going to grab progress tokens for every civilized card that doesn't have the uncivilized. Okay, these are progress tokens. Some people call them victory point tokens. We're going to place one on each civilized card. All right, the one with just the pillar, the white pillar icon. The aim of this game is to score victory points. These progress tokens act like victory points. Talking of tokens, we've got some tokens numbered one to six. We don't need number six, we need one to five. I'm going to place them. This is just for the solo game under each one of these spots in the market. And this will help decide what the bot is going to do. Remember the bot deck, we're gonna take five cards. I'm gonna place them underneath these numbers, one to five. We're gonna be first player, so that makes things easy. We're gonna draw a hand of five cards from our deck. Okay. Right, how does this game play? What's it all about? We're a civilization. We begin the game of barbarian civilization. Each of these 16 civilizations plays very differently. So you might want to play a single civilization over and over until you get familiar with it. Their setup might be slightly different. The makeup of their decks, the size of their decks. Some will remain barbarians. Some will start in empire. Some will never become empire. That kind of stuff. All this stuff is different per civilization. So what the designers have done is they've ranked each of the nations, I'm saying civilizations, they're called nations, in difficulty. So Celts, for example, are difficulty two, right? the Romans difficulty one. What that means is how complicated are they to play? Utopians are difficulty five, for example. Okay, Arthurians, difficulty five. Whichever set you get, it does describe the full set of nations. Okay, the eight set from the other box. So it is a temptation to to buy both. I mean, I got Imperium Classics and then went out and bought Legends the very next day. So the aim of the game is to win victory points. We're playing empires, nations, in the time period from 3000 BC up to 1066, the Battle of Hastings. In the rule book, they do excuse some of the terms like barbarian and so on, but they're just mechanical terms. So they, they, they've paid attention to the historical significance of each civ and or nation and how they play and the types of cards they play and, and that kind of stuff as well. This is a new kind of deck building game. Our deck starts small. As we develop our nation, then we're going to be building our deck from this market of cards, opening up new options. And there's some interesting deck building me mechanisms that we'll experience as we play Things that make it an interesting deck builder with fascinating tactics. Some of the cards that we pick up will have victory points in the bottom right. So our deck is going to ultimately determine our score along with these progress tokens. 
The game end will be triggered by a number of different factors. When this main deck runs out, when we advance our civilization, which is when we get through this lot, hit this point, okay, and then get through all of our development cards, that will end the game. If this fame King of Kings is flipped face down, there's a way to get that fame card. We'll talk about that when we get into it. And also if collapse, all right, the collapse of civilization is triggered when this unrest pile is emptied. Then the solo game, if that should happen, then we immediately lose the game. Once one of those other end game points is triggered, we count our score. If we got more than the bot, then we win. The game's going to be played in a series of rounds. So we start with our deck, we've got our hand of five cards, we're going to play cards from our hand, take actions, redraw, turn passes, they take their turn back and forth okay, until one of those end game triggers happens. Now, to help us with this, we've got a whole bunch of tokens. I've already told you about progress tokens, and we start the game with one progress token. We also start with three action tokens. That's because on each of our turns, we can take three actions. We're going to place these on our state card, okay? our barbarian state card. So each turn, we take three actions, we redraw our hand from our deck. Each time we get through our deck, we draw one of these nation building cards and build up our deck. Once we got through this, we go to our accession card, which is when we flip from barbarian to empire, and then we can start playing out our advanced development cards. And that can trigger the game out, remember? Okay, so we've got three action tokens. We also take five exhaustion tokens. Right? Other games, other deck builders will do stuff like play a card, tap it or exhaust it. We have exhaustion tokens, so that's exactly the same. When a card exhausts, you place a token on it. Right? So the five kind of gives you a maximum number of exhausts that you can do. Tilting, I've heard used, yeah, those kind of effects. So five exhaustions, three actions. And our civilization, our nation, also has some resources. They've got population and they've got materials, things that we can build with. We start with three materials, these are these, and two population. Okay. Now we can begin and take our turn. On your turn, you can do one of three things. You can either choose activate, innovate, or revolt. Let's look at those in reverse order. Revolt says if you picked up any unrest cards okay, and in your hand, unrest is stuff that kind of clogs up your deck. What you can do is get rid of those unrest cards, put them back over there in the market. Remember, if that unrest empties, we immediately lose the game. But for a revolt action, what you can do is return any unrest in your hand to that deck and end your turn. That's it. That's all you do. Innovate says that's the second option. Discard your whole hand grab one of those cards from the market. I'll show you that when we come to it. The third option, the most common action, is activate. All right, so it's activate, innovate, or revolt. So let's say we want to activate, and this is where we use our action tokens. So to take an action, we remove an action token from our state card, and with that action, you can play a card from your hand. So my first action, I'm going to play this cauldron right, into my play area. And for my second action, I can play this other card from my hand. These are cards in my hand. It's called Conquer. And it says, pay two population to acquire a region or tributary, or pay three to break through a region or tributary. Now, I've only got two population. So, actually, um, I'd rather break through than acquire, but we'll come to that in a second. I've just played the cauldron, and as well as playing actions, as soon as you activate, you can then start exhausting cards that are already in your play area, right? These are these ones with this infinity symbol. These are permanents that stay in your play area. So I could, if I wished, exhaust this card. You can't use it Exhaust abilities when you innovate or revolt, only when you activate, only when you're taking actions. Okay, This is what these exhaust tokens are for. We've got five of them, so you can do this five times 
during your activate. So to exhaust, we place an exhaust on the cauldron and it says pay one progress to gain two population. Now I forgive you for the card sleeves. Let me just show you. I mean the artwork's great, but actually I'm not showing it off to its best because of these sleeves. Pay one progress, so I'm going to lose one progress, that's one victory point. We'll put that back in the stock and we'll gain two population. Cool. I want that population uh, because I'm going to use it to pay for other effects like Conquer. So as my action, I'm going to play this Conquer card. It says pay two population to acquire a region or tributary or pay three population to break through a region or tributary. Okay, so this is how we get stuff from the market. You can acquire it or you can break through it. What's the difference? When you acquire a card, pick a card. Remember it says we can take a tributary or a region. So that's either the chin or the coast. Okay, this is a blue tributary with the blue flag, a yellow region with the yellow hills. When you acquire a card from the market, you take it and you put it in your hand. If it had any other cards attached to it, like this unrest, that would also come to your hand. Okay, so if I acquired the chin here, I would take these two cards. Right, unrest is going to stuff up my deck. If the card that you acquire had any progress tokens on it, you'd take those as well. All right, so that's acquire. What about breakthrough? The only difference with breakthrough is, let's say I choose to take this tributary, you don't take the unrest card. Okay, I just take the card, put it in my hand, and that stays where it is. It doesn't clog up my deck. The other option is, when you break through, instead of taking the one that's here in the market revealed, you can take the one from the deck above instead. If I choose, okay, so that's these three. Tributaries only exist in this main deck, right? If I choose to break through for a tributary from the main deck, I just reveal cards one by one until I reveal a tributary. Add it to my hands, reshuffle those that I drew, stick them back on top. Okay, that can also apply, let's say I was trying to take a region, there wasn't one here and this deck was empty. Right, remember, there's only six cards here. So at some point they're going to get exhausted. Then you draw from the main deck instead. Remember, main, end, main deck empty is a game end trigger. All right, so let's say I want to take the chin. All right, and I'm going to break through. I don't want this unrest card. All right, so this says pay two to acquire, which would give me that unrest, or pay three population to break through. So I'm going to play three population. I'm going to stick that chin card in my hand okay that goes off to the unrest pile then we refill the market with a card drawn from the main deck it's a region and the regions don't get unrest cards so that's my third no sorry that's my second action first action then I exhaust third action second action so my third action I could now play the chin, this nation I've just conquered, it has an ongoing passive effect that increases my hand size by one. And also it has one victory point per three permanent cards in play, excluding regions. Okay, it's a variable number of victory points at the end of the game. All right, this is gonna help me. All right, that's it, I've taken my three actions. That was my activate turn done. So now we clean up. First move we do when we clean up is we take a progress token from the supply and we choose a card from the market, one of these five, and we place that progress token on it. I'm going to still, oh, mysticism is quite good. Yeah, I really like it, mysticism. I'm going to pop that here. Okay, mysticism. I'm putting it here because, remember, when you take cards, you take progress tokens. So if I think that's the card I want to take next time, Put a progress token on it. And obviously in a mo multiplayer game, you're kind of giving other players a clue as to what you're after. 
and it incentivizes other players to take those cards because they've got more progress. More progress is more victory points. Uh, we'll see what the bot does about that. And the other card I was tempted by was Coast. Getting lots of regions, this is like conquering these places. This is like developing cultures. Yeah. What I just did is went out and conquered the Chin. This is like going and taking over another civilization, yeah, another nation. So I conquered the Chin thematically. But settling the coast, settling the rivers, they're opening up new effects for us, exhaust effects. So yeah, I'm tempted by this one as well. Um, but I kind of like this one. Let's see what happens. Then a multiplayer game, while you're clearing up the rest of your player area, the next player can carry on. But obviously in a solo game, we're, we're on our own. Uh, these are going to go back on our state card, as is this. Now we can choose, before we end our turn and redraw, to discard any number of cards we wish from our hand. So if we wanted to get rid of some of these cards, we could do. Maybe we want to get through our deck. Maybe they're not useful to us. Maybe it's just stuff clogging up our deck. We don't want to as it goes. So we're going to keep hold of these. And instead, we'll just draw back up to our new hand size, which would normally be five. But because of the chin, it's now six. So I'm going to draw three more cards. First is an unrest. Then we get another permanent Helsica. And another unrest. Okay. This goes to our discard pile. All right, that's it. That's the end of our turn. Now let's move to the bot's turn. First thing we do is roll the six-sided die. It's just one to six, just a regular six-sided die. Okay, we've rolled a one. We place this on the card at number one spot. Now if we'd rolled a six, we place it off over here. And if you want to, you can place this here, but number six here. And with a number six, effectively, you're not tagging any of the five cards in the market for the bot. Okay. As it goes, they're tagging this spot in the market. This acts like their hand. And just like we played cards from our hand, they're going to now start playing cards from the hand. They're going to play cards with the exception of the one with the dice on it. Okay. So the dice here, we're going to start playing cards from left to right, starting with this one. Okay. So we flip it over. Now we're going to ignore everything on the card. We're going to ignore all the text. right? And this is where the bot plays differently from what a regular player would. All we're looking at is the type of card it is. It's a conquer card with a barbarian red axe icon here. And this is where we go to this reference card. Our state card, or the bot's state card, is currently barbarian. If they'd progress to empire, we'd flip over and we'd use the empire side. Okay. If you don't have these cards, remember you're going to the solo rule book. You're going to scroll to the back. Scroll. You're going to flip to the back. And we've got Romans Barbarian, Romans Empire. Okay, and what we're looking for is the type of card it is. All right, I'll show you with the rule book first because that's probably what you're going to be doing. We start at the top. Does it have this black sword icon? No. Does it have the fame icon? No. Is it named Glory? No, it's called Conquer. Does it have the Region icon? No, it's a grey card. Does it have the permanent Infinity symbol? No. Is it Advanced? No. Is it Prosperity? No. Right, we've sort of gotten all the way <laughs> scrolled. We've gone all the way down to the Red Battle Axe. So that's all we do, right? Just go work away from the top down. If we ignore, 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 and it's none of these, then it just does Other, which is Gain Two Materials. Right, this one says, if able, spend two, uh, three population to break through for a tributary card. It doesn't have any resources yet. Okay. Otherwise, if able, acquire a region. Okay, He can acquire a region. Otherwise, gain one population. All right, so that's what we're going to do. He's going to acquire, if able, he's going to acquire a region. He can acquire a region because there's two available. Right, so why may he not be able to acquire a region? Maybe when this stack's empty and there's nothing in the main market. So there's two regions that he could acquire. This one and this one, the river and the coast. We want the coast. Don't let it be the coast. 
which one does he choose? It chooses the one that's worth the most points. This one's worth two, this one's worth two, this one's worth one. These are not worth any points. If there were any progress tokens on them, it would add points. Okay, you treat these victory point tokens, or these progress tokens, as if they're worth one each. So actually that one's worth three, that one's worth two, that one's worth three. Ignore the unrest sitting underneath. Remember, he's not breaking through. It says acquire. If able, acquire a region. Regions don't have unrest anyway. Okay, so these are both equally zero victory points. In the case of a tie like that, you just choose the one in the lowest numbered slot. Okay, so he's going for the river. The cards that they acquire just go on top of their deck. That means, of course, that they're going to come out in their next hand. That's it, done. Now we move on to number three. Okay, working away from the top, it hits the region card. Okay, the region logic says, I'll put it on here because it's bigger. Not this, not this, not this. Okay, it's the region card. Yeah, that's the first icon that matches. See? Discard the top card from the bot deck and then play this region and then exile the card from the market. Right, so one, two, three, we've got to do three steps. Discard the top deck card from the bot deck. All right, so that card I just picked up is going into the discard pile. He's working his way through his deck, remember, to try and get these cards out. So every time you go through, cycle through your deck, one card comes off. You're getting closer to a session. A session means we move to Empire. Empire means we can start playing developments. We're heading towards game end and score lots of points. Okay. So it's got the top of the bot deck. Play this region. So this is going to go into his play area. I'm going to put these over here. Regions that he's played, let's put it down here actually. Region that he's played, and then exile a card from the market. Oh, we should have filled that gap, because that's probably the one it's going to exile actually. Always refill the market after a card is acquired or broken through. So the card it chooses, the bot will never exile a card with a token on it. They've all got tokens, the bot just ignores it and doesn't exile a card. Which card does he exile? Just the one in the lowest slot number. So yeah, it's going to be this exports card. Exiled cards, try and keep tidy, just go, this is the exile symbol, they just go face down over to the right here. Okay. They're kind of out of the game. There are effects that could bring back an exiled card, but for now that's where it's going. You can place them face up, face down, doesn't matter. All right, let's refill that spot. And it's a tributary, so it needs an unrest card. Okay, that's that card played. Next, we've got two more to go. So the bot is doing quite a lot of stuff. Oh, it's the glory card. Okay, I'll go back to the. I'll go back to the solo rule book just because it's a little bit easier to, to show on, on camera. So glory is a named card. It's not got the sword icon. It's not got the fame icon. It's the named card, glory. Glory is the way to get fame. Okay, that's what the effects they have. So it says, Glory, if able, abandon three regions. They've only got one. They've only just played one region. Yeah, they literally just did it. To gain the top fame card. Otherwise, gain one progress. And you recall a region. Ah! So they gain a progress. I'll put it here. And then we have to recall. So recall means taking it and placing it back into our hand. A region. Now, fortunately, we've not played a region yet. Yeah, we didn't have any in our hand, but if we played one of these, then we'd have to recall it. So the bot can attack you. Look out for that. Okay, these are going to the bot's discard pile, so these should be over here now. Okay, last one, card number five, is City of Rome. City of Rome is... Let's just go back to the rule book for this. Not that one, not that one, not that one, not that one. Okay, it's an infinity one. Permanent effect. It says, gain one population, put this card into history. Okay. Gain one population, one population. So he's gathering resources, effectively, and place into history. History is kind of like burying a card. You might have seen in other games, things like that. Um, 
it's not it's it's out of your deck, it's not in your discard, you're saving it for game end, you place it underneath your power card. And this is a good way to you know, if you if I gain something like this, it says the Sumerians, it cannot be played, but it could it's got three victory points, so how do you get that how do you get that out there without it clogging up your deck? You can put it in history. Okay? So the city of Rome has been confined to history. People will talk about the city of Rome for centuries to come. It's there. If it had any victory points on it, they would count at the end of the game. It's now out of the bot's deck. It's no longer clogging up their deck. All right. But of course, that means if it was your, if it was a player card, they wouldn't be able to use the effect anymore. And for the bot, it means it won't be in their deck to trigger this effect anymore, gaining population. All right. So there it is down in the annals of history, underneath the power card, no longer part of the game All right. until scoring. That's it, that's the end of the bot's turn. They've played out the remainder of their cards. Now we'll just do a little bit of cleanup. Just like us, they add a progress token. Where do they add it? They add it here where their die was. All right, so if this was number three, they'd be adding it up here. It's number one, they're adding it on the cataphract here. There's two progress there now. If this were number three, here, what I do now is then shuffle this down to the number one spot, but we're already there. And then we redraw from their deck to fill back up to number five. Okay, they've still got cards in their deck, but their deck is still very short. Only one card left. And that's it. Back to us. Well, just before we wrap up, you might be thinking, oh, this is a target now. There's two progress on there. So yeah, that's, I mean, progress is valuable. But it has, see this blue icon up here? Same for this. Civilized card. That's the Empire icon. Okay. At the moment, we are barbarian. We're a barbarian nation. We can't play Empire cards. Right. That's what this axe means. When we move and upgrade, when we get through this, we get through and we change to Empire. Then we won't be able to play these barbarian cards anymore. Okay. Some nations have special abilities. That, that, you know, I don't want to spoil everything, but there's lots to discover in this game. So, although it's valuable, if I take it now, potentially with the idea of using it later, it's going to clog up my deck for quite some time, and for as long as we're still barbarian. All right, makes sense. So, lots of strategies, lots of ways to play this game. So many great ideas in here. But I've set myself up nicely the ongoing turn. I've got my cauldron, I've got my chin, we're all good, I've got a hand of six cards. Um, one of the designers, Nigel did Buckle, did check my video and I have made a little mistake here with the, with the unrest. I've still got the four player, three plus player unrest cards. So <laughs> I've given myself too many, so they need to go. It was the ones that came from the, the Kelp deck. So they need to be like this. Alright, that's better. Okay, so we've only got four left in this deck. We've got to keep an eye on unrest. Okay, good. That's it then. Join me next time as we continue this playthrough of Imperium from Osprey Games.